Well, we are staying with that conflict because the war in Sudan, which caused hundreds of thousands of people to flee, the violence has once again highlighted the role of conflicts in migrations. And this latest crisis is high on the priorities for the International Organization for Migration, or IOM, which just elected its new leader last week. Amy Pope will take over from Director General Antonio Vitorino in October. She will become the first woman to lead the organization in its more than 70 years history. When I spoke to Amy Pope in Geneva earlier today, I asked her first about migrations in Sudan and Somalia and what the IOM is doing to help those countries. So IOM's most basic responsibility is to ensure that we have humanitarian support for those communities that are most in need. So for example, in the response in Sudan at the moment, we are providing shelter and assistance to people who are both internally displaced within the country and those who are fleeing the country. I think it's critical that we continue to do that work. What I do believe is an opportunity, though, is for IOM to better anticipate which communities are going to be most at risk. We can't anticipate conflict always, but we can identify when a community is going to face pressure as a result of climate change. So the more that we can anticipate and mitigate on the front end, the more then we have the resources to respond to those conflicts that emerge and are not anticipated. And are there any particular countries where you've seen climate change being as the key factor which has led to migration? Somalia is the first example that comes to mind. They have faced five seasons of drought. They're communities that are largely agricultural and pastoral. They are communities that have very few other options when drought comes. And so it's no surprise that we've seen over a million people who have fled their homes because they have no other options. They're choosing between effectively starvation we're moving. For me, that is one where it's entirely predictable that when we're looking at communities that are reliant on the land, if they cannot make a living out of the land that they'll move. And so that's a place where I believe IOM, working with our partners around the world, can help identify, anticipate, and mitigate the pressures before people are forced to leave. The United Nations Agency, which oversees migration, the International Organization for Migration, or IOM, elected a new leader last week. American Amy Pope stood against the incumbent Director General Antonio Vitorino and won in a vote by the 175 Member State Council. When she takes office in October, she will become the first woman to lead the organization in its over 70-year history. When I spoke to Amy earlier, she was in Geneva and I started by asking her the problems around migration in Africa, in countries like Sudan, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Libya and what the IOM is actively doing to help those countries. So IOM's most basic responsibility is to ensure that we have humanitarian support for those communities that are most in need. So for example, in the response in Sudan at the moment, we are providing shelter and assistance to people who are both internally displaced within the country and those who are fleeing the country. And I think it's critical that we continue to do that work. What I do believe is an opportunity, though, is for IOM to better anticipate which communities are going to be most at risk. We can't anticipate conflict always, but we can identify when a community is going to face pressure as a result of climate change. So the more that we can anticipate and mitigate on the front end, the more then we have the resources to respond to those conflicts that emerge and are not anticipated. And are there any specific regions that you're looking at and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is of a greater concern and this should be the first priorities that I jump into and follow? There are a couple places that I'm watching very closely. Africa as a continent has experienced a range of these pressures. Right now, we know in the Eastern Horn of Africa that not only have they experienced multiple seasons of drought in a row, now they're facing flooding, putting people who are already vulnerable at at extreme risk. We also know that we're seeing the confluence of climate pressures, of poverty, of conflict across various countries. But there's also tremendous opportunity within Africa with communities and economies that are expanding. And so there's a real way for IOM to help really respond to the pressures with much more positive ways of engaging communities. So so that's one. 
The others in the the island communities, right, Pacific Islands, Caribbean Islands, they are at the forefront of what we're seeing in terms of climate impact, facing really existential threats. I think there's much more we as an organization can do to help those communities be prepared for their future. Here on News, we've spoken to so many humanitarian aid agencies that have been telling us about how there is little funding that is coming into the organizations to help those people who've migrated or those who fled the war and conflict, mainly due to the fact that much of the money, as the world understands and will so support, has gone to the war in Ukraine to help the Ukrainians. Is that a worry for you that there is less money going into organizations that need to help and seek to help those in need most? It's certainly a worry, but that is why I think it's so critical that we change the way we engage. There are two ways. Number one is Uh, as I've been discussing, the more we can anticipate the impact of factors like climate change that will displace people, the more we can predict and mitigate and engage early, the less expensive and the more effective those interventions are. But the second piece of this is recognizing that it's not just going to be governments alone that help come up with solutions or help fund solutions. We need to be engaging the private sector, the diaspora, foundations, a range of actors who have a role to play, who can be part of creating something that is sustainable in the end. That is Amy Pope, the incoming head of International Organization for Migration. 